All right, folks, this is your 4.5 uh, notes. 4.5 is a little bit deeper with multiplication rule, complements than conditional probability. Okay, one of the big things that we're going to do in here is what we call these at least one probabilities. Um, find the probability of at least one outcome or at least one success or whatever we want to call it uh, out of multiple trials and then um, conditional probabilities. Find the probability something happens given this other thing happened. We kind of saw a preview of that last time from when we have to make the adjustment for dependent events. Okay, um, At least one is equivalent to one or more. All right, the complement of at least one is none. All right, so at least one, the uh, rule we're going to use is one minus the probability of none. Okay, so let me give you an example of it. So we're going to find the probability that in five tosses of a single die, you roll at least one six, and there's the at least one. Okay, you got to be looking for that. So when you see at least one, we're going to use this. The probability of at least one is one minus the probability of none. So in this case, one minus the probability of none would mean once the prob one minus the probability of no sixes in five tosses. That's what we mean by none in this case. So what we need to do is figure out a way to come up with this. Now no sixes in five tosses would mean that we have no sixes on the first toss and none on the second and none on the third so we're going to multiply. So what's the probability I get no sixes on the first toss? Well it's one minus the probability of one six so that's five sixes. So five out of the six possible ways to get um, five out of the possible six rolls are not a six. So that's the first toss times same thing on the second toss times same thing on the third fourth and fifth toss. So not a six, not a six, not a six, not a six, and not a six. All of them are and because they're um, they have to all not be sixes. Now what does that reduce down to? That's one minus five six in parentheses to the one, two, three, four, five, fifth power which is the probability of not getting a six on any single roll times or to the power of how many tosses you're you're throwing. Alright, and then you go to your calculator. Alright, and that's one minus you need a parentheses, so five six to the fifth power. Hit enter. Is that? So that's point five nine eight to three decimal places. All right now, um, you could, I mean, if you wanted to, try to do this as a fraction. But again, once the denominators and numerators start getting that big, um, your calculator is probably not going to be able to return it. But you can try. All right, this one is a fraction again. But when we have four-digit numerators and denominators, usually we round those things to a decimal anyway. All right, so 0.598. That's roughly 60% of the time would get at least one whatever uh, um, side of that die we're seeking in five tosses. Alright, so that's the way, what we mean by one minus the probability of none. This is usually easier to find than this because of all the different cases. If you try to do this without using this one minus probability of none rule, you have to find the probability of one uh, six. And then you have the problem the probability of two, and then three, and then four, all the way up to five. All five are, are sixes. And that just, uh, it, it's a lot more steps than this would be. Trust me, it would be tons more because you have to, uh, if there's one six, it could have been the first one was a six and the second one was not. Third was not, fourth and fifth were not. Or it could have been the second one was and all the rest weren't. And it could have been the third one was. You have all these different cases to consider for each possible outcome uh, where the where the six took place. So trust me that this is 
a quicker way to do it much more efficient if you can get yourself to learn it All right, and then the other thing that you do in this section of the big thing is conditional probability this is the notation probability of b given a All right, that's the way we read it and this is a formula for it the probability of a and b divided by the probability of a so if you know what the probability of both is a and b and you know what the probability of, of, of n a is you can find the probability of b given a using that or you can just do it intuitively completely fine to do it intuitively alright so this one says find the probability of the sum of two dice is seven given the first die rolled is four so the way that this looks is the probability that the sum equals seven given the first die equals a four alright now according to the rule that we just talked about on the last page, I need to find the probability both occur divided by the probability the first one occurred. Alright, um, so the probability the they both occur, sum is 7 uh, and the first die was a 4, this is what it becomes when we consider these conditions. Okay probability of the, the sum is equal to 7 and the first die is equal to a 4 divided by the probability of the first die is equal to a 4. Alright, what's the probability of the sum is equal to 7 and the first is equal to a 4? Well, for the sum to equal 7 and the first to be a 4, that means we had to have a 4 and a 3. There's no way around it. So there's one way for that to happen out of the 36 possible rolls. Now, what's the probability of the first die is a 4? Well, that's 1 out of 6. All right, there's 6 outcomes for the first die. The probability that it's a 4 is 1 out of 6. And then do this division, we get 136 divided by 1, 6. If I remember, dividing fractions means to flip and multiply. I end up with this. 6 goes into 36 6 times and I end up with a probability of a 6. Alright now, the probability of the sum is equal to 7 given the first die is a 4. Intuitively, this is using the rule. Intuitively, the probability of the sum is 7 given the first die is a 4. So that means that I'm sitting here staring at a 4. And for the sum to equal 7 what does this die have to be? Well there's only one thing that it can be it has to be a 3 so this die has to be a 3 what's the probability that I roll a 3? 1 out of 6 so that's where this number is coming from intuitively Okay, so this is using the formula, this is just using common sense. I've already rolled a 4, i got to get a 7. The second die has to be a 3. There's a 1 in 6 chance of getting the, the number I need on the second die. Okay, so you will use this intuitive process for these just as much as you will use um, that formula, if not more. Alright, and then some probabilities from tables. So let's look at, um, let's say that this is uh, gender, this is grades on a test. Let's say two boys made an A, three girls made an A, four boys made a B, three girls made a B, six and five, three, oops, three. Alright, so this is the breakdown of gender and grades. So let's, first of all, we need to find our totals. So total number of boys is 10, 15, 16. All right, the total number of girls is 8, 10, 13. Okay, so we got a total, grand total of 29 students in this class. All right, and then if we wanted to do the letter grades, there's five that made an A. All right, there's seven that made a B. There's 11 that made a C, 5 that made a D, and then a 
single F for the class. Okay, so this typical Bell distribution, you got a peak at the C's and it goes up from the A's, peaks, and then goes back down. So a typical question you could be asked here, you know, from a table would be like find the probability so a student makes an A. A student at random makes an A. Well, don't look here because this is the boys that make an A. So the overall students that make an A are there's five out of the twenty nine. So five twenty ninths. All right. Now find the probability a student makes an A given it was a girl. All right. Well, given it's a girl, now we're down to these thirteen students. Okay. That's how many girls there are. All right. So the given condition narrows it down from the total in your sample space to just the total that satisfies the given condition. Now of these 13 students, of these 13 girl students, how many men in A? Three. So the probability is then three out of 13. All right, and then you look at five out of 29, three out of 13 and this would be something that you would use to, to suggest if there was gender bias. You know, if the probability of getting A given your girl is significantly higher than it is of just getting an A at random, then you could suggest gender bias. But, you know, with a small sample, that's not relatively that far apart from each other, then we here we would compute conclude that there's probably not. Now, we would like it ideally to be equal and then we could say these two things are independent you know grade and, and uh, gender but um, we would need to see a significant change um, for that to be you know for to, to say something like that to say they're not independent all right but anyway this is this is type of things that you could get uh, type of questions you could get from a table let's do uh, the probability it was a girl given Oops, given that grade made was an A. Now notice everything switched around. Now the given condition is the grade made was an A rather than the gender was a girl. Well, if the grade made was an A, that's a, a, a five. There's only five students that made an A. Three of those five are girls, so we get three out of five. Now notice the numerator was the same in both, okay, because that that's what satisfies both girls and A. All right? And remember if you go back to the formula, uh, the numerator here was A and B. So both together. So that is where A and B intersect here. But then what we divide by the given condition is what's changing here. The given condition was girl, there's 13. The given condition was the A, there's 5. So that's why we're getting the different denominators. All right, so pay careful attention to um, what conditions given versus uh, just where they intersect. Okay, and notice also again, given a condition, you're not going to use the total number anymore. You're going to use um, the values that make up the condition.